Joining us now is Oji Okwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Genix. Good morning, Dr. Vati. How are you this morning? I'm good. Great. Good morning, Tundu. Morning. I'm not saying anything to this man. He's he has kidding. a lot to say to you. Don't worry. Yes, we, have, <laughs> we have stories this morning. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, former Minneapolis police officers J. Alexander Kang and Tao Tao, convicted on federal charges in the death of George Floyd, were both sentenced to prison terms in back-to-back -back hearings on Wednesday. Kang was given a three-year sentence, followed by two years of supervised release, while Tao was sentenced to three and a half years in prison, also followed by two years of supervised release. Then, 13-year-old Alena Wika, who was partially homeschooled by her mother, has made history as the youngest African-American to be accepted into medical school. Wicker was accepted into the University of Alabama at Birmingham's Hersing School of Medicine. Alena, who is passionate about STEM, NASA and Legos, created Brown STEM Girl, a STEM project to encourage more black girls to pursue a career in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. In Angola, a big pink diamond of 170 carats, called the Lulu Rose, was discovered in the country and is claimed to be the largest of such gemstone found in 300 years. The pink gemstone is the fifth largest diamond found at the Lulu Alluvial Diamond Mine, where 27 diamonds of 100 carats or more have been found. Under sports, after some high-profile vaccine-related absences from games last season, the NBA announced on Wednesday that the league will not have a COVID-19 vaccine mandate for players in the 2022-2023 season. However, in a memo from the league's office, players were advised to stay up to date with vaccinations. Last season, Brooklyn Nets' Kyrie Evan refused to be vaccinated and missed the first three months of the season. Finally, on our entertainment, seven months after being fired by the cable news network, Chris Cuomo has announced plans to host a new podcast and a primetime television show starting this fall on News Nation. Cuomo, one CNN's most popular primetime personality, was fired in December after the network said that he wasn't forthcoming about the extent to which he was helping his brother, former New York governor Andrew Cuomo tried to weather a sexual harassment scandal. In an interview with News Nation, Cuomo said that he is starting the new show as a way to help people. Nobody had on um, period, people from the right the way I did on my show. The truth, I had more politicians on the right reach out to me the last few months than the left. Well, let's begin what's trending. Presidential spokesperson Femi Adeshino on Wednesday responded to senators who threatened to impeach President Muhammad Buhari over the rising spate of insecurity in the country. During a live interview, Adeshina said that the senators are wasting the country's time and that of the upper chamber of the National Assembly and described them as the minority of minorities. Adeshina also dismissed claims of gunshots that were heard in Buari, which triggered the closure of the federal government girls' college. On Wednesday, the People's Democratic Party legislators in the Senate staged a walkout after a motion by Minority Leader Philip Aduda was dismissed by the Senate President Ahmad Lawan. <laughs> take some reactions to Femi Adeshina's statements. This is from Adjugan, who wrote, Everybody is shouting, hashtag Buhari must go. Am I the only one who sees Femi Adeshina as part of the problem of this country? How do you defend failure with no apology? Another Twitter user there wrote, Femi should stop speaking for the president. He causes more damage to the already damaged image of the presidency anytime he speaks. If he doesn't have anything more to tell Nigerians, then silence is better. I, mean, I really liked this um, comment from this Twitter user because there was one part of that interview that I was shocked by. 
the part that he talked about, well, those gunshots, they could have been from you know, the military or the soldiers. Well, how do you know it's from terrorists? I mean, how do you say things like that, Tundu Abiola? It like makes your eyes water, doesn't it? I, I mean, <laughs> what are you talking about? What is the difference between a terrorist gunshot and a soldier's gunshot? That means there is anarchy, there's a problem. There is chaos. Otherwise, there'll that be no shooting. The yes, the exactly. The school was closed down because yes. of the gunshots. No, I think he does get the point. He's clearly not an unintelligent man. And I don't really like talking about individuals. But I think what happens when people feel they have a job to do and mm. be a spokesperson, they tend to require the rest of us to suspend our own intelligence, our own skepticism, and just buy whatever they're saying, hook, line, and sinker. And that's just not going to work this time. I've actually heard worse from Mr. Adishina, but mm. this is not about him, and I just want to move away from him okay. right now. I want to just talk about the fact that there's nothing wrong with what the senators are doing. Yes. Earlier on this morning, I was critical of the senators in the news segment because of the timing, because of the six weeks um, ultimatum while they go on their recess. For me, that shows a lack of seriousness. I, I'm more comfortable talking about a group or an institution such as the Nigerian Senate. It shows a lack of seriousness for me. If I tell you, OG, I'm, I'm going to deal with you, OG, but I'm just off on holiday. And when I'm back, I'm going to give you what for. You're going to get it. Of course, you're going to laugh in my face like you're doing right now. President Buhari is hardly quaking in his boots. If you're that serious, then cancel your recess and show us you're serious. Give him a, a one day, a one week, or just immediate action, demand immediate action. And the other uh, issue that I have with what Mr. Additional said, not that I'm yeah, talking about him personally, I don't like to do that, is... The Constitution allows for the senators to act in this manner. Yes. So they, this has got nothing to do with anarchy. This is exactly the opposite of anarchy. This is order. The Constitution guarantees checks and balances so that the legislator can check executive excesses, can check executive inaction, lapses, as they're trying to do now. And if it's constitutional, it cannot be said to be any form of anarchy. And th we're, we're no longer in the military regime. You cannot pour contempt on people exercising their constitution constitutional rights to demand an impeachment. Whether or not they will actually go as far as they ought to is remains to be seen, but they are within their rights, granted by the Nigerian constitution. Well said, Tundra Abiola. Dr. Bati. Okay, yes, uh, well, you brought the uh, statement from uh, Femi Adesino, but just to uh, paint a fuller picture, it, it's not only Femi Adesino that has responded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Femi Adesino talked about anarchies. It, he said, you know, these are minority of minorities, and uh, also, uh, his colleague, Garuba Shehu, uh, said that this is performative and babyish, and that nothing will come out of it. And the Minister of Information uh, was quoted as having said that, well, this is just mere uh, propaganda, and it is laughable. Where well, all of these statements, I think Senator uh, Ogunlewe, you know, helped us to resolve it. When he said, these prospects are doing their job. What do you expect them to say uh, in the public domain? They've all been recruited as spin doctors, and they are not likely to join a crowd uh, to uh, you know, attack uh, their principal of the government in which they serve. Uh, I guess that's the way the cookies crumble in that regard. Then the second thing, of course, is that when he says these are minority of the minorities, that's not true. You know, because there were also members of the APC yes. that were part of this uh, protest. I, uh, Senator Adamo uh, Bukachua from uh, Bauchi North, you know, was uh, part of that, uh, was part of that uh, protest. And he's a member of the uh, All Progressives uh, Congress. There are probably more members of the All Progressives Congress, uh, you know, who have not yet uh, come forward uh, publicly, but who are part of that two hour closed door meeting. Uh, that has been referred to uh, by uh, Senator Eyinaya uh, Abaribe, Abga, uh, Abia South, he's from Abia South, you know, referred to that, uh, look, it was inter-party, you know, so there was nothing partisan about it. This was, you know, uh, the uh, lawmakers collectively saying, enough is enough, something has to be done about the security challenge in the country. Well, you can't say it's laughable. Because the process is defined under Section 143 of the Constitution for the removal of the president from, from office. Or it's very specific on the grounds of gross misconduct. And the definition of gross misconduct within the purview of that Constitution is violation or breaches of any part of the, of, of, of the 1999 Constitution. 
And if it can be proven that the president has violated any part of the Constitution, then they have a strong case. In fact, the Constitution goes further in that section 143 to say gross misconduct means what in the opinion of the lawmaker constitutes that misconduct. So in other words, the, the uh, lawmakers, they don't even have to offer anybody any explanation. They can just decide and say, well, this man stands guilty of gross misconduct. But to uh, ensure fairness and justice, you know, uh, sections uh, in that uh, part of the Constitution provides opportunity for the president to defend himself. And if any uh, president is removed from office in that, uh, in that Constitution as he stands, as the basic law, the, the court of law cannot inquire into it. But would they get to that point, given the constraints of time, given the very stringent conditions in that constitution, given the fact that this is predicated on the uh, supremacy of numbers, and also the fact that you have to look to constitute a panel, you know, you have to look for men of unquestionable integrity. Well, I don't know, you know, how many of such men, you know, Nigerians will be able to put together. In fact, the battle that will be fought over the composition of that panel alone, we go beyond the 2023 uh, general election, given the type of country in which we have uh, found ourselves. But the way our presidency should see this as some kind of wake up call, uh, as an expression of uh, lack of confidence in the ability of the government or the administration to deal with a specific challenge that has resulted in a situation whereby the whole of the FCT, Federal Capital Territory, has asked schools to shut down. Yeah. Parents are rushing to schools to go Terrible. and pick their children. People are running away from parts of Abuja, right? And Abuja is supposed to be the most guarded, most secure part of the uh, country because that's where you have the seat of the government. That's where you have a special unit called the Brigade of Guards. Six men from the Brigade of Guards were killed along the Buari uh, Kuba Road. Uh, the, these uh, lawmakers, uh, one of them, in fact, said, uh, look, uh, that's in the DA Lumelu. He told them, he said, please, let, let us all go back to our constituencies. This FCT is no longer there. So the lawmakers themselves are running away. And I raise the question whether they will, they will be secure in their constituencies that they are running to. So they, 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 they've taken flight from Abuja. You know, but if the problem remains, they will still have to go there to go and justify the fat allowances and salaries that they are collecting so that they work for it. So if they run away, what, what should the rest of us do? Well, should right. we run away from Lagos too? No, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. We shall take another story. A Babcock University orientation brochure for first year students which use euphemisms to describe parts of the human reproductive system has gone viral. Two pages from the brochure describe semen as the male's choice seed that guarantees the preservation of the future, while the vagina was described as the lady's sealed parcel of land that must be exclusively preserved for the king's cultivation in marriage. Well, there are mixed reactions on social media. Let's take a tweet from Jessica who wrote, we don't take sex education seriously in this country. Everything is held to some religious or moral standard. It's deeply annoying. Tundra Biola, over to you. What kind of lurid purple prose <laughs> is that? From a citadel such as Babcock, I'm horrified. And you know what? Over yeah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bati, we're all waiting well, for your analysis. Babcock of University story. is, uh, you know, a Seventh day Adventist uh, school, right? Where morality is uh, placed on a very high pedestal and very strict rules have been introduced, but what we're talking about here is sex education. Yes. And semen, is that not spam, right? Uh, the female organ, that's the uh, vagina. Now, what is this roundabout, you know, verbose way of putting it? At the level of style, it fails. What we were told by, uh, in the book, uh, Elements of Style by uh, E.W. Strong, is that where one word can serve your purpose, don't go and use 10 words. <laughs> so first, at the level of style, this fails the test, okay? The rule is to just keep it simple. You want to refer to uh, spam, you are saying uh, uh, the fertilizer that, uh, uh, <laughs> the male's choice seed that guarantees the preservation of the future. Look at so many words, you know. So that in itself, you know, is very strange. Then uh, is, the woman's uh, private uh, organ is referred to as uh, the, the lady's special parcel of land that, that, uh, that must be exclusively 
preserved right. for the king's cultivation. cultivation. I mean, what kind, of, what kind of language is that? <laughs> well, I hope uh, the authors of that document, because I saw two names yeah. on the uh, author's uh, page, uh, Prince Fowue and uh, Augusta Uluye. Well, these are the people whose names are at the back of that uh, document. I hope they realize that the parcel of land that they are talking about, parcel of land under Nigerian law, land use act of 1978, is to be held in trust by the state governor. Section one of the Land Use Act 1978. So they are invariably, if they say that a woman is a parcel of land, handing over every female student of uh, Babcock University to be in the custody of uh, the governor of the state. Oh is, is, is the Land Use Act not uh, applicable here? Yeah. You know, that is to show you the extent of the ridiculousness. So there is hypocrisy involved. Uh, there is an attempt at sex education, uh, which is not working. Uh, I checked out uh, Prince Wowowe. He's actually a consultant in sex education, you know, and he has a center for sex education. But, but uh, this uh, style, you know, of communication, I find it odd. However, it's a very, it's a standard habit for many people not to want to mention the uh, organs, you know, the private parts of, uh, you know, people. When we were undergraduates in our time, anybody that went to the University of Calabar would recall that during uh, orientation, for students, right? Uh, the vice chancellor then, uh, Professor Emmanuel uh, Anyodele, you know, he would tell uh, students that, uh, look, you are here to study, but that anybody that ventures to peruse the internal anatomy of a female homo sapien oh will be summarily dismissed <laughs> from the school. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> <laughs> or, if you don't want to be, uh, if, if you don't want to be dismissed, you, the Perusa, must marry the Perused. <laughs> so, quite, so this, <laughs> or the Perusi must marry the Perus. You know, I needed to bring up this story. <laughs> so it's not new, yeah. you know. In, in, at the University of Calabar, we had uh, a similar thing, you know, uh, internal anatomy of a female homo sapiens. You know, and if you peruse it, you must marry the peruse, whatever that means. But most, many people who went to Unica, they, they will never forget that description. So maybe this is an attempt at uh, color uh, by Prince Wowe and Augusta Oloye, who, who is also, I think, a teacher, a sex consultant. But can they please learn to say this thing clearly? Because these students, they already know these things anyway. Yes. Eh? Or you think they don't know? They know these things. Well, Dr. Abasi, if Rufai was here, he would say, God will judge you for saying all those things and keeping a straight face. <laughs> well, thank you for that. We'll take our final story. By highlighting Ukwam Fon Jacob, a mathematics champion who has been admitted into the World Science Scholars by Professor Brain Green, a renowned theoretical physicist in super string theory. Jacobs, who is from Akwaibom State, is a student of Graceland Secondary School in Port Harcourt. He is said to have clinched over 20 medals in various math competitions globally. Many Nigerians have reacted to a photograph of Jacobs wearing his medal. Some referred to him as the mathematics wizard. Jacob is currently on his way to Ghana for a research program. I mean, I am so proud of this young man, Tundra Viola. 20 medals, different countries that he has won all these competitions. Nigerians are making us proud. We are really doing good, if only we are afforded the opportunity to continue to strive the way Jacob has done. We're truly gifted in this yeah. country, but even among a nation of gifted people, Master Jacob here stands out. I yes. mean, this is a legend. Yes. He looks like Michael Phelps with all those medals. medals. And it's extremely impressive because personally, I can barely do basic arithmetic. So I cannot imagine the kind of brain in his head. He's a genius. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm so glad he's been recognized. Thank you, Oji, yes. for highlighting this story. I need it to. Dr. Abati. Well, Oji, uh, thank you for bringing at least one happy story. Two happy stories, I hope <laughs> so. So, and this week, we've yeah. had uh, Toby Amushan. Yes. We've had Ese Brume. And now you have uh, in Jacob, you know, uh, a country of diamonds, of gifted people, geniuses. There is another family in the UK. Is it the Imafino family, yeah, you know, whose uh, children, you know, excelled, you know, uh, to the admiration of everyone in the world. And you have them everywhere, young people. The thing to do is to encourage these young people, give them the opportunity to shine, to flower. And for the leadership in Nigeria, 
to at least make sure that the, the, the future generation, the emerging generation, would have a country that they can be proud of. Because the more important thing is for uh, you know, Jacob to grow up and be able to say, I'm a Nigerian, and I'm proud to be a Nigerian. But Nigeria, like I, I usually say, I, I, like Ireland in the, uh, at the turn of the 19th century, is increasingly becoming a provider of talents for other uh, jurisdictions. When people cannot progress here, they cannot flower here, then they go and become assets to other countries. We hope that the country would uh, reach a point where people like Jacob can excel at home and uh, flourish. No, thank you all for your great analysis as always. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.